structurally in holographic breathing, the face, the cranium, the neck, all start breathing in a way they weren't before. And you've got all of these facial nerves and the vagus nerve, they're involved physically and energetically in that breathing. And they're all feeding back into the central brain complex, which is the center of everything. Those from the central brain complex, they come out through the midbrain and they feed into the cerebrum. From the pons area, sorry, from the pons area, they go back and feed into the cerebellum and all of those together come down either through the vagus nerve or the spine and feed the whole body. So that central area connects through the nervous system to everything. And the breathing of the face, the nerves are all feeding directly back into that. And they're all connecting around the pons and the cerebellum. And again, there's another naming problem here. Because if you look at the anatomy of it, you've got the pons called one thing, you've got the cerebellum called another thing. But the cerebellum is the two organs or a pair of organs at the lower back of the brain. It comes forwards and it wraps around this central brain complex. And the area where it's wrapping around is called the pons but it's actually, you could easily call it, the front part of the cerebellum. And for me, the cerebellum is a bit like the lungs, the pons is a bit like the heart, and they're intimately connected. It is basically nerve fibers. There's no difference in the anatomy. They're nerve fibers, you've got the cerebrum on top is coming all coming together in two channels and they arrive into the central brain complex just below the thalamus. I've forgotten what I was talking about. Then you've got the cerebrum coming around through the pons which is the front part of the cerebrum and also feeding in to this central brain complex. So you've got like a tree here and they come together through this channel that goes straight down. And then you've got this, it goes out like a tree, it spreads out like leaves or cauliflower in different areas, comes around and then that connects into the central brain complex, the spine and the facial nerves. They are all basically nerve fibers. There's no difference in the anatomy of them. They're neurons, to the main part, neurons with the axon, which is traveling along, taking the charge, myelinating glial cells around them, and astrocyte cells holding it all together, uh, and different things holding it all together, and then microglial cells swimming through it, which are the immune system. There's not much else other than that. So they're made of the same stuff, and somehow they think. <laughs> and somehow they connect to God, and somehow our body is connected it. And really, I don't think science knows that much about what is going on there, because it's, you're talking about spirituality, really, and the meaning of life when you're talking about the brain or anywhere in the body. So energetically for me, the face relates or the energy points I've shown in the face, they more relate to the cerebellum. So we're gonna work with the face to connect to the central brain complex and the cerebellum and then we're gonna use that. That will light up the cerebellum, that will give people access to the cerebellum. And what I was saying with holographic breathing, 
whether you're doing it in an advanced way like these webinars or whether you've just learned it from someone or one of my free webinars or video or something, I think people are continually changing their state of consciousness because it's continually accessing to this central part of you. The thalamus at the top of the central brain complex is where people say our seat of consciousness is. And apparently it's this area is where the spirit leaves the body when we transition to another life. It comes out through this central brain complex and the thalamus. So just the actual physical movement, the actual nerves, they all feed into this central place. And I think the reason people, getting back to my original point that we left about 15 minutes ago, the reason people fall asleep is that the cerebellum is to do with the dream state. And so people pass. I don't know that people are passing, well maybe they're passing in and out of consciousness, but they're going into a shamanistic dream state. And that can be deeply healing. So that is what we're working with. Now, a lot of this is also going to interface with the cerebrum because obviously you've got in this around the ponds, it's all coming together, all of the nerve pathways from the whole top of the brain, all of the nerve pathways from the cerebellum, they're all coming together in the ponds and behind the bond ponds and all connecting and then becoming this central channel. So from the cerebellum, it won't just feed into that central panel and just come down. It goes into it and it goes up and down. So, but generally I find working with this area it will connect me to the cerebellum, but we will also probably connect up a bit into the cerebrum. Let me show you some pictures. Oh, okay, well, there's one. So, central brain complex from the front, this is the thalamus at the top, the two lobes of now, I painted these, I can't say they're dimensionally correct, but they look pretty. And then you've got the fourth ventricle in the middle, this is a ventricle, and these are ventricles, all with cranial fluid. But you've got this central column here, you've got the cerebellum feeding into the pons, into this whole heart central area. And then you've got the two lobes of the cerebrum here, and their channels come in just below the thalamus there, it's called the midbrain. All their nerve pathways come in there. All these nerve pathways, come, and they all meet in the pons area. And that connects, this is like Grand Central Station or something, that connects to these areas and the whole rest of the body. And all of the nerves from the face and the act is all feeding directly into there, that central area. So you can see, you know, as a little budgerigar there, the, the pons looks a bit like the heart and chest area. The cerebellum is like a pair of wings maybe, I'm not sure. But these two, this here is an extension of that. All the nerve pathways are coming forwards into this area and that's all joining and meshing together in a central channel. You've got the thalamus here and all of the nerves of the cerebrum, they all come down just below the thalamus and join in here. So it's all happening here. It's all connecting. Everything connects in that central area. And the face with holographic breathing, with this moving breath and these energies, all of the nerves from the face, from here, the face is here, they're all coming out some of them a bit lower down here, but they're all connecting into that central place.
see if there's any others. I think that's, well, there's a nice one. I haven't got one of the vagus nerve, but there we have it with the spinal cord and dural tube and cranial fluid. And there we have it. This is front on and that side on, so you can see it coming down the spine. This looks like, you know, the, the kind of ornate walking sticks, like a shaman would have his staff. These look like one of those staffs with, which would have the ornate magical tops on them. So our central nervous system is a bit like that. Um, I'll show a few more. They're nice. No, I don't know, actually. Just that one. There's all the... There's the cerebellum at the back here. And there's a spinal cord with all of the nerves coming out. But this is the cerebellum here. 